So as you all know that I'm a very visual person, I like to see pictures, I like to do the movements before we talk about any topic. So the way I remember and I visualize the elbow is making this, all right? So this is my left hand and this is my right hand. My left hand, uh, I'm, I'm keeping my left hand in a way that it's ulna. So the ulnar articulating surface with the radius. Okay, so this is radial ulnar joint of the elbow joint. And this is how I make the humeral ulnar joint. Okay, so humeral ulnar joint is a hinge joint and radial ulnar joint is a pivot joint because the radius basically pivots on the concave surface of the ulna. Okay, so let's just write down in your notepads what all joints that we are gonna talk in the elbow joint. So you have three different bones. One is humerus, the second one is ulna, and the third one is radius, right? So these three bones comes together and make elbow joint. Now, um, elbow joint, the major motions at the elbow joint are flexion and extension. And uh, at the radio uh, ulnar joint, you have supination and pronation, all right? Now these three bones works together to produce all these motions. Um, uh, we'll talk about the open chain and closed chain uh, movements and the couple motions and the reverse section of the biceps as well. So let's start with the very basic joint, which is the humerus and the ulna. All right, if you can see the pictures, I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight all these things for you guys. Uh, on the left-hand side, you have your uh, resting position of the humerus and the ulna. So here you can see your humerus and this is your ulna. Now you can see the um, humerus condyles are convex and your ulna trochlear notch is going to be your concave. All right. When I'm doing flexion and extension, my ulna is moving on the condyles of the humerus, which means that my my ulnar trochlear notch, which is concave, is moving on the convex condyles of humerus. So according to the concave moving on convex, uh, we're talking about the same direction with respect to the roll and slide. So now we have concave moving on convex, so the roll and the slide will be in the same direction of the movement. When I say of the movement, I'm talking, uh, I'm talking about the most distal component of the joint or the extremity, which is going to be your wrist or hand. All right, so if wrist is coming anteriorly, that means you are talking about the anterior slide and roll on the ulna. And if the wrist or hand is going posteriorly, that means you're talking about the, uh, the slide and the roll posteriorly on the humerus through the ulnar trochlear notch, right? Now, let's talk about the beauty of the pivot joints, especially with the, um, uh, not the pivot joint, I mean the hinge joint, especially with the uh, humerus and the ulna, right? So this is how the humerus and the ulna looks like, okay? Now, which means that it's locked with each other, and this is the only movement that you can get through the joint, right? Now, if you look at the rules of the mobilization, I, I, I like to connect the mobilization and the concave convex together because I wanna think about the interventions when I'm thinking about the arthrokinematics of the joint as well. So when you are talking about the, the gliding and the passive uh, intervention for the treatment and the grade one mobilization is distraction, right? Now, if you look at the joint, which is like hinge joint and which has like interlocked, if you try to visualize a little bit in details, like you see how it's locked with the, the, the trochlear notch is locked with the head of the humerus right here, right? So if you wanna distract the joint, which direction are you going to distract it? You're going to distract it this way, right? But now you see the joint is locked in a way that when you try to distract it, it won't be distracted, right? It will behave like this. If you can see me in the video, it'll it'll, if you try to pull the ulna um, you know, away from the humerus, you will not be able to distract it. Which is why what you do is, so you wanna keep your patient into the resting position, which means mostly patient is in the supine position 
And let me grab Mr. Scali, which will help us to understand how the patient is going to be relaxed and how you're going to distract the joint. Now you see when the patient is supine lying and you're going to flex the, um, uh, you're going to uh, not completely around 30 to 40 degrees of the knee, uh, sorry, elbow flexion. And then you're going to grab the, just the, the proximal aspect of the forearm, right, right here. So if you're going to grab the proximal aspect of the forearm and you're going to pull the forearm in a way that you're scooping a, 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 a spoon of ice cream, okay? So it's the distraction is not straight, but it's at the 45 degrees. That's how you distract the humeral ulnar joint, okay? So you have a, a scooping movement. It's like you're, you're taking a scoop of the ice cream like that, okay? So you grab the forearm like this and you try to go at 45 degrees, 30 to 45 degrees towards you to distract the joint. You cannot distract humeral ulnar joint in complete extension. So you want some of the flexion at the joint and then you try to take a scoop out of it. That's how you distract this joint. That's number one. Now, how do you distract the radius from the humerus? Okay, now you see which side is radius? Your thumb side is radius, right? Now, let me try to find a nice picture if I have about the radius. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just take all the drawings away and let me go a little downwards and see if we have the picture for the, the radius. Okay, there you go. I think uh, this picture can work out well for the radius and the humerus, you see, right? So radius is basically this shape, a round shape, which is connected with the epicondyle like this, right? So in order for you to distract, don't look at the picture and the explanation over here. This is something else that we're talking about, but I just want you to visualize how the radius and the humerus makes a connection, okay? So radius is basically pivoting on the humerus like this. So if you want to distract the radius, you can simply distract the radius uh, away from humerus in the most relaxed position, okay? Which is going to be like, you know, you're going to grab the radius from its proximal right here and you stabilize the humerus and then you distract away from it, that's it. It's that simple. That's how you distract the radius. But again, the patient has to be in the loose back position, which means the most relaxed position of the elbow joint for you to distract the radius out of it. Okay, there you go. I think we have a nice picture, a zoom picture for the radius and the humerus, right? So you basically distract the humerus, or sorry, the radius in distal direction right here. You can stabilize it here with one hand and then grab radius here and pull it distally right there. Okay, so that's about the humerus with radius and humerus with ulna. All right, now we are going to talk about supination and pronation, which means you're talking about the radius and the ulna. Okay, so I'm gonna look at a picture where we can see um, the joint radius and ulna. Let me go and see. Okay, there you go. Is everyone able to uh, see the pictures nice and clear? Okay, great. Now let's try to visualize. Uh, now, as I said, if you want to think about the ulnar and radius, this is how you wanna think about, okay? So proximal, radi uh, proximal uh, radio ulnar joint and the distal radio ulnar joint. On the left side, we have proximal and on the right side, we have distal, all right? Now, if you see right here, uh, this is going to be your fixed ulna. I'm sorry, this is not proximal, I'm sorry. Let me just say it again. No, I was like, what's happening here? Okay, here you go. This one is proximal right here. And this one is your distal. 
All right. Now, when you have, whenever you talk about the supination and pronation, you what what you want to remember is in open chain, the ulna is fixed and it's the radius which is always moving. Now, why do we say that? Because when you think about it, uh, if you go back to one or two more, uh, one or two minutes when, while we were talking about the humerus and the ulna, we said humerus and ulna looks like this, which means there's only one plane of movement that's possible at the humerus and the ulna, okay? This is kind of locked. This is a hinge joint, so it can only move in one direction. You cannot move it into the rotational movements, right? So it's the radius which makes connection with the ulna like this, which always moves, which is responsible for the supination and the pronation, all right? So when we are talking about the supination and pronation, you always wanna think about radius is moving, okay? So open chain, the radius will move. Versus when you talk about the closed chain, what do you mean by closed chain? Closed chain means when, when the most distal extremity is is stabilized, is touching the ground or touching the wall or has been blocked by any of the surfaces. When you, okay, let's consider that I have a wall behind me. So I'm, I'm trying to touch the wall. And you see when I'm touching the wall, I'm basically touching my wrist joint here, right? In the distal radial inner joint, the radius is the big bone, all right? However, in the proximal radial inner joint, the ulna is the big bone which is connected to the humerus. Okay, so the base, the styloid process or the base of the radius is very big, which makes most of the connection with the, with the wrist carpal bones, right? So when I'm trying to place my hand on the wall, I'm basically, what I'm doing is I'm stabilizing the radius, all right? When I try to place my hand on the wall and I try to do supination and pronation, it's not the radius which is moving, it's the ulna which is moving with humerus. So the whole shoulder joint and the ulna are moving together to perform supination and pronation. It's a little complicated to visualize, but we'll talk about it in a bit, but let's just talk, let's just, uh, talk about the most simple complex uh, concept here, which is supination and pronation according to concave moving on convex. So I'm gonna take all these writings away and I'm gonna just show you the picture so that you can understand it well. All right, now let's talk about the proximal radial nut joint. You see um, the darker, uh, uh, let's say the orange bone is going to be your radius and the yellow bone is going to be your, your ulna. Okay, now in the proximal radial nut joint, your ulna is going to be fixed and your radius is moving. Now radius moves like this. If you are looking at my picture, radius moves like this, right? Radius is your convex surface. And ulna is your concave surface. We're talking about the proximal radio ulnar joint. If that makes sense, right? So we'll talk about it, which means when the radius always moves, right? In open chain, we always talk about open chain. We are not gonna talk about the closed chain anymore. So when you're, when you're doing the supination and pronation, radius is the only bone which is moving and the convex is moving on the concave. Now let's all try to do supination right here. In order to do the supination, you have to start it from the pronation, right? So let's do a completely pronated arm and let's try to go and let's open one uh, thumb on your right arm and try to do supination, okay? So when you're doing supination, your thumb is going backwards right? So I'm talking about the direction is going to be posteriorly, right? I'm sorry if I'm coming too close to the, to the camera. So let's just try to see here. Even if I'm starting from the mid prone position for, for the supination, I'm going posteriorly, right? If you remember previously what we talked that whenever you want to talk about the concave or convex, we always have to think about the anatomical position of the body and anatomical uh, directions. So when my thumb is going backwards, I'm talking about the posterior direction of the movement. Now, when convex moves on concave, the direction of the slide or the glide in the joint is going to be, so we're talking about the slide or glide is going to be opposite to the direction of the movement. All right, so slide or glide is opposite to the movement of most distal part. 
The most distal part we are considering here is either fingers or the thumb. I'm taking the reference from the thumb because it's easy for me to visualize it. So I'm taking my thumb backwards, which means I'm talking about the posterior movement. So in order to improve the supination, what I'm going to do is I'm going to glide anteriorly on radius. So for supination, it's going to be anterior glide, or you can call it uh, uh, ventral glide, or you can call it the palmar glide. All right, so let's talk about the pronation very quickly. I'll repeat that in a bit. Let's talk about the pronation. Now you see, if you go from the mid uh, prone position or from supination, and you're going, you're taking your thumb inwards or towards the palm or anterior, right? You're going anterior, right? From supination, you're going anterior. So you're going to give a posterior glide to the radius, right? As I said, radius is the only bone moves when you're doing supination and pronation. So you're only going to glide radius. There's no point of gliding the ulna. The treatment will not be effective if you're gliding the ulna. Whereas you're only going to give posterior or anterior glide on the radius. One more time, let's do mid prone position and do supination. Your thumb went backwards. So because radius is convex, you're going to, so if the movement is posterior, you will give anterior glide because the glide or slide is going to be opposite to the direction of the movement uh, at the most distal part. And when you do pronation, you're basically coming anteriorly. So you posterior glide to the radius to improve the pronation. I hope it makes sense. 